I'd like to start this evening by asking you a, a few questions. Right now, at this very moment, as you're sitting there, are you wearing some piece of jewelry or article of clothing that someone special gave to you? Let's use a necklace as an example, or a jacket, perhaps. If someone like your mom or a close friend gave a necklace or a jacket to you, would you have some special connection with it? Or any reasonable person would say, yes, of course. And if, say, your mom passed away later, after giving those gifts to you, wouldn't that necklace or piece of jewelry or jacket or whatever it is have even more value in your life? Yes, of course. Whenever you look at the jewelry or wear the special clothing that your loved one gave to you, you somehow have fond memories of what that person has done for you. So if this is true for us human beings who are fond of good gifts to us, then how much more true it is for God who gives us not material gifts of jewelry or clothing alone, but God gives us the gift of his very self in the Eucharist. Whenever we eat the body of Christ and drink his blood, we remember in a very, very profound way what Jesus did for us. And today, we recall that on the feast of the most precious body and blood of Jesus, Corpus Christi. Here's another point of reflection for us to ponder. Now, our faith tells us that Jesus is truth, right? Jesus does not lie to us. Everything Jesus says is worthy of our belief. For example, if Jesus were to show us this rectangle here and say to us, this is a circle. It is not a rectangle. Do you know what I would say in response to that? I would say, amen. This is a circle because you, Jesus, are all truth and my faith is in you. My five senses may tell me that this is a rectangle, but my faith tells me that this is a circle. Jesus will not lie to us. Now, if Jesus, who is all truth, doesn't lie, and if we were to take this paper and Jesus were to say, this is a cup of coffee, I would immediately say, amen, this is a cup of coffee. It's not a piece of paper. Even though my five senses of sight, of smell, of taste, of touch, tell me that this is a piece of paper. But my faith tells me it is a cup of coffee because Jesus said it was. I would say amen. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote in his work, Adoro te devote, which is a beautiful poem, what God's Son has told me, take for truth do I. Truth himself speaks truly, or there's nothing true. What God's Son has told me, Take for truth do I. Truth himself speaks truly, or there is nothing true. In today's gospel from Mark chapter 14, Jesus says over ordinary bread and wine, not just over a piece of paper or a rectangle, take it, this is my body, and over the cup of wine, this is my blood. I will not say that the Eucharist, then, is just a piece of bread. I will say, amen, it is the body of Jesus. Even though my five senses of sight, 
smell, taste, touch, hearing, tell me that it is a piece of bread. My faith tells me it is Jesus Christ himself. The Eucharist is really, truly, and literally Jesus Christ. This is called the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. The substance of the bread literally changes into Jesus' body, and the substance of the wine literally changes into Jesus' blood. When the priest says, this is my body, this is my blood during Mass, that's where we get the word transubstantiation. Trans in Latin means change, and substantiation means substance. So the substance of the bread and wine change into Jesus's body and blood. In fact, this is how the first Christians have always understood the Eucharist up until our own day. And the Catholic Church has retained the meaning of the first Christian community's understanding. We see this in early church fathers like St. Justin or St. Irenaeus or St. Augustine. The idea that the Eucharist is only a symbol is really a new idea. It's only 500 years old. That started during the Protestant Reformation. As the very popular Protestant televangelist Francis Chan once said, for the first 1,500 years of Christianity, all Christians throughout the world held that the Eucharist was really, truly, and literally Jesus' body and blood. So Jesus did not say, this is a symbol of my body, but rather Jesus said, this is my body. In today's first reading from the book of Exodus, Moses acts like a priest by sacrificing the blood of animals. And then he would take the blood of those animals and sprinkle it on the altar, and then he'd sprinkle the people. This was pleasing to God. But now, as the letter to the Hebrews in today's second reading says, it is no longer the blood of bulls and animals that are being used to atone for sin, but rather how much more pleasing it is to God in the new and everlasting covenant for the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, to be sprinkled on his people. Whenever you receive Holy Communion, you are receiving a sprinkling of the blood and body of Jesus Christ. Thus, whereas in the Old Testament, in the book of Genesis, the whole human race was condemned by eating from a tree through the first Adam. In the New Testament, on the other hand, the whole human race was redeemed by eating from the tree of the cross, Jesus the second Adam. Condemnation through original sin came by eating, and so it is fitting that salvation comes through eating too. All of the Old Testament foreshadows the Eucharist that you and I will receive. The fruit from the tree in the book of Genesis, Abraham receiving bread from Melchizedek, Moses and the Passover lamb in the book of Exodus, manna that came down from heaven in the desert, the placing of that manna in the tabernacle or the Ark of the Covenant, and then putting the Ark of the Covenant in the temple in Jerusalem. And there's even a legend, this is not in the Bible, but there's a legend that the chalice or the cup that Jesus used was in Noah's Ark. All of the Old Testament was meant to prepare for the hard saying of Jesus that unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And many of his disciples walked away from this very hard teaching. So what does this mean for us, dear brothers and sisters, if this is really 
literally and truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ that we will receive in a few minutes. Well, the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life, as the Second Vatican Council teaches us. That means it is the beginning of our faith and service to others, and our service to others leads back to Sunday Mass. The Eucharist is the reason why we love the poor and the disadvantaged and the marginalized and the the oppressed and and, and the voiceless. The Eucharist is what gave Mother Teresa the strength to get up at five in the morning to go to Mass and be strengthened by the spiritual food so that she may feed others with food for their bodies. The Eucharist is why we love. Saint Catherine of Siena, that great mystic after whom our parish is named, said, love transforms one into what one loves. And for many of us who are coming back to church after many months of being away or watching us uh, from home through the internet, let us rekindle that love of the Eucharist that we've had all our days serving Jesus. The Eucharist will even give us strength to love those who are very difficult to love. Hmm. Can you imagine? How can we serve somebody that doesn't return love to us? It is through the Eucharist that we will get the strength to be able to love those that are difficult to love. St. Pius X said, The Eucharist is the shortest and safest way to heaven. And and finally, St. Catherine of Genoa said, Any time spent with the Eucharist, be it long or short, is best time spent of our lives. You know, I know people from this parish who um, started a, a new ministry called Mensa Christi, the Table of Christ, where they go out and feed the hungry. You know, we're looking for drivers and volunteers to help prepare food, or you might think about making a donation. But this is because of their love for the Eucharist, the source of our unity. It's what unites the community and the church together. I know another woman who every month she would give um, some diapers to newborn babies. And we also have rental assistance that Catholic Charities provides Our love for those who need help is based on the Eucharist. So let us, too, help those in need in our families, in our communities, especially during this time when a lot of people are nervous or anxious about what's going on in the world. So in closing, dear brothers and sisters, as many of us return to Mass in person, may our love for the body and blood of Christ perhaps we have not received for many months, ever grow in our hearts when we receive Holy Communion, whether through spiritual communion or in a few minutes now. Go back to your pews. Have Jesus rest on your hands, your tongue, your heart, and speak to him so intimately the way you would even to a best friend the way you would to somebody who loves you more than you know, because he delights in you. He cherishes the prayers that you bring to him when you receive Holy Communion. It pleases his heart. May our love for the cup of salvation and the bread of life grow this evening. As the responsorial psalm said, I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord.